money, you don't need money. And that's why I did this show to prove to people, you do not need money. You do not need fame. You don't need stuff, yep. but you do need a commitment and you do need a strategy. And you're going to have to have some courage. Today's special guest is none other than Grant Cardone, who owns and operates seven privately held companies and a private equity real estate firm known as Cardone Capital. Not to mention, he is also featured on season two of Discovery's breakout hit, Undercover Billionaire, where he takes on a challenge of building a multi-million dollar business in 90 days. Grant's also a New York Times bestselling author of 11 books, including The 10X Rule which led to Cardone actually establishing a global movement called 10X. And now that 10X conference is now the largest business and entrepreneur conference in the world. Guys, please help me welcome the one, the only Grant Cardone. Grant, how you doing, dude? So good to see you. Good. I'm good. I'm, uh, you know, grateful that I have a home to live in and, and my family's with me every day. So I'm, I'm glad to be out of the desert uh, and, and not living in an RV. <laughs> well, it's, it's been quite the journey. I've been, uh, my wife and I have been digging in really hardcore on uh, Discovery Plus, the brand new app that they've got. And obviously they, they launched Undercover Billionaire. We've been uh, consuming it like crazy and learning from that. But, uh, you know, one of the main driving factors that uh, seems to drive at everything you're doing nowadays is that love for family. And then you just recently at the last 10X conference had Sabrina up on stage. How powerful was that? Oh man, it was like, they've spoken uh, two years ago and uh, we did uh, Miami Marlins Stadium, 34,000 people, and they both wrote their own speeches, eight years old and 10 years old, walked out there and delivered to 34,000 people. Oh, I remember I, I, when I was that age, I couldn't talk to three people. <laughs> I bet. And oh, so they, they definitely have a head start on us. But, you know, I've created a life where it's based on our family, yeah. family first, and and we the businesses support the family. I, I literally kind of re, reworked my whole life around them <clears throat> and that's one of the things that was hardest about this show undercover billionaire because i i thought they don't cover this in the show but i thought i was going to be able to bring the kids out mm -hmm. three days after i got there i said let me just go get situated i was so naive to the situation and i said let me just go out there elena my wife and and um two or three days i'll have you guys out here no problem <laughs> And uh, when I got there, I was like, okay, that, that, that's not going to happen for weeks, maybe, maybe months. And it didn't happen for 80, 86 days, actually. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So I completely underestimated that one. Yeah, I bet. And then you got slapped with uh, COVID actually hitting the crew. And if I'm not mistaken, you actually ended up with COVID? Yeah, I got COVID. I got uh, what worse than COVID, though, was I had altitude sickness twice. Oh, wow. First time I went there. Uh, I got altitude sickness. It was just terrible. It was worse than the COVID actually. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. Yeah. And then uh, when I went back, cause we stopped, I had to go back and I'd come back to sea level mm -hmm. and then had to go back to, to Pueblo and got altitude sickness again and COVID at the same time. It was, uh, it was brutal, but you know, look, being sidelined is what was most brutal. Like just, <laughs> I, I experienced what the whole country was feeling with quarantine deadlines bills budgets bill you know you like hit the clock was ticking yeah and i had 90 days to start to build a million dollar business and uh then covid hit shut the country down yeah. 40 million people were out of work i mean this is the story really of being an entrepreneur yeah, absolutely you got an idea you're going to go do something you're gung-ho and the next thing boom you get punched with a tornado or hurricane yeah. my mama used to say you know when it rains it pours and then COVID hit, 40 million people out of work, restaurants and bars shut down. So did it was like, then you get sick and then you're, you know, you got, you got issues at home. I got my own businesses falling apart. Like, like it was, it was insane. I would never do it again. If they call you up, uh, Stephen, and ask you to do Undercover Billionaire, run as fast as you can. The other way. <laughs> I'll make sure I do that. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm glad you kind of position it to entrepreneurship because it is. It's an idea. It's grit. It's going after it. Um, you know, so much of the uh, early part of the show, and for those who haven't seen it, obviously it's a must watch um, because it does illustrate real entrepreneurship, real grinding, real what it takes to make something successful and build it from scratch. And if you're an entrepreneur, that is going to happen. You are going to have to be the person that gets behind the wheel and drives that thing. But in doing so, you know, one of the things that you had in the show so far is this essence of momentum. You got some momentum going, 
then you had to pull back. How were you able to rebuild the momentum? Yeah, like you know, it's 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 you know, we talk about cash flow and business and sales and startups, but very seldom does anybody talk about what happens when you lose the momentum or how do you even get it. Yeah. So when I got to town, when I got to Pueblo, um, there's a lot of stuff you don't see in the show. First of all, this show is not produced at all. Yeah. At least with me, I, I'm an unproducible character. <laughs> so like you can't, you can't. I'm not an actor, right? I, I I don't know. I don't know how. I can't act. Like if you give me lines, I'm not going to be able to do them. I'm going to say it my way. It's impossible for me. It's just not my thing. Yeah. So. When we got to town, <clears throat> we got there about two o'clock in the afternoon. The first day I was in Pueblo. I did not know where I was going. Mm -hmm. And when we were landing in Colorado, I said, okay, where is this? Okay. And, and they said, Pueblo. I thought, I said, Pueblo's in New Mexico. <laughs> They're like, no, no, this is Pueblo, Colorado, south of Colorado Springs. Yeah. And uh, I had never been there. So I got on my phone, the new phone they gave me. Mm -hmm. They took my other one away. And I get on this new phone and um, I start searching, okay, uh, uh, demographics in Pueblo. Mm -hmm. They said to me, they said, hey, what's the, what's the first three things you're going to do when you get to town? I said, first thing, you gave me $100. I'm going to take the $100 and bring it to the bank. That's exactly what I did. First thing, went straight to the bank and dropped off the 100 yeah. Second thing I did was went to a gym to work out. Yeah. And the reason was I was broke now, officially zero, mm -hmm. rather than rather than spending my way to zero, I just went and got rid of the money Yeah. so that I didn't have money to manage. I didn't want to be a money manager. I didn't want to manage a hundred bucks. I didn't want to try to spend, you know, I'm like, just go to zero as fast as you can, dude. Yeah. Now, the reason I did that on this momentum topic is because when you go to zero on your own determination, yeah. not because you just leak out, mm -hmm. I could go get my momentum. I, I was no longer like, oh, I'm trying to manage a hundred bucks. I, I didn't have any money. Yeah. So that's why I had to start working angles and I had to start hustling. Being broke is actually an asset, not a, not a detriment. Oh, for, sure. for sure. And uh, so, so when you don't have money, what do you have? Hey, I got to go talk to people that have money. And that's why my battle cry was who's got my money, who's got my money <laughs> in the show. Yeah. So I went to a gym and they're like, why are you going to a gym? You're broke. You're trying to build a million dollar business and you're going to make time for a workout. Like, are you that dedicated to your health? And I said, no, it's got nothing to do with my health. Pe people are easy to meet in gyms. Yeah, it's true. You know, you and I go to a gym, man, I can pick up a barbell for you. I can say, Hey, can I get this for you? Could you give me a spot? It's easy to talk to people. So people need to understand the way to get momentum is through people. Yeah. It's not in your head. Momentum's not a mindset. It's actually something that happens in the physical universe. So uh, I started meeting people. I started adding contacts to my phone. I need contacts, right? The third thing I did was I went and looked at a business for sale. So I pulled up businesses for sale in Pueblo. They don't show this in the show. Yeah. Because uh, look, you can only produce a show as much as you can think about one, right? Like they're, they're thinking about let's make Grant look like he's suffering rather than look at the angles. Yeah. And they're not entrepreneurs. They're camera guys and audio people and producers. So the third thing I did was look for, that's how I ended up at the RV park. I ended up at the RV park because it was a for sale business. Yeah. And Oh, RV park. I'm going to go to the RV park. I was actually going to that park to buy a business on the first day I was there. Dang. <laughs> so it just so happened when I got there, I'm like, Hey, there's 200 beds here. They're all empty. Yeah. This is a, this is a warm place to sleep tonight. And I ended up in that conversation with Ryan Zabukovic about like, dude, I don't even have a place to sleep tonight. Yeah. I just got to town. This is where you got to start working your story out. Yeah. And you know, the hardest part of the entrepreneur game really is one working your story out and then getting momentum with that story. Yeah. Uh, so the, the most difficult thing for me in this whole thing was like, I spent 35 years working my story out yeah. about Grant Cardone yeah. <laughs> and not Lewis <laughs> and then did Grant Cardone. I can't use Grant Cardone anymore. Yeah. So like it was that, that, that was very, very difficult that I could not be who I am and who I've spent a career and a yeah. bunch, getting a bunch of momentum about who I was. So the 10 days was all about, Hey, I need some traction. I need a little momentum. I need a victory, a little tiny victory. And I didn't get any until the 10th day. Mm -hmm. 
And on the same damn day that I finally got a victory, wham, hey, we're stopping. I said, stopping? Yeah. And dude, like they don't show it. They 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 show a little bit of it on on, on me getting upset with the guy. Yeah. That turned into a huge, huge fight. Well, yeah, because they were, you know, in, in some ways they were actually taking you're bringing your family out away from you. I mean, you'd been out there, you were doing it. They're stopping production. Now, well, what do you do? You have to fly back. Yeah. You know, like like I'm like guys, you don't stop production. We shoot this through COVID. Yeah. And they're like, no, we can't do that. I'm like, why? I thought you guys wanted to shoot a real TV show. I yeah. thought you wanted to shoot a TV show about the bullshit that people go through every day. Yeah. And the people, you know, you, you, America can't stop right now just because of the virus. Yeah. And, and at that time, look, it wasn't a big deal yet. Nobody had really died. Not, not massive numbers of people hadn't died. 40 million people weren't let go yet. And I'm like, guys, time out. Shoot the show the way it is right now as it is. Let me continue going through this. And they're like, no, we can't do that. Liability insurance. I'm like, you guys are full of shit. I <laughs> thought you guys wanted to do a real show about real entrepreneurs in America. And this is what happens. Yeah. And so it became this huge, huge thing that you don't see on camera. But uh, even, even the execs at Discovery called me. I said, I'm staying. I'm shooting. I'm continuing. Right? Yeah. Like, I was freaking insane. <laughs> And the, 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 the executives at Discovery call me and say, hey, we're, we're, at, we're done. Mm -hmm. We are over, bro. We may never come back. I said, oh, fuck you guys, I ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. So like, I was so upset, man. And, and because I'd finally gotten a little traction. So when I finally realized I wasn't, go, uh, you know, that they, they weren't going to be there, mm -hmm. I didn't cash the check. This guy just gave me a check for 10 grand. I didn't cash it. Now I'm like, he's going he's gonna to cancel it. Yeah. So not to mention the I, relationship piece. The, exactly. The relationship's an issue. I can't talk to him anymore. I yeah. can't tell him what's going on. Yeah. So I can't tell him, hey, by the way, Discovery Channel's uh, cutting the show because he doesn't know there is a Discovery Channel. Yeah. So I'm in this trick bag. Uh, and, you know, when I left, I did not know what, that I was coming back. That's why there's two women in the show now. Yeah. by the way. Yeah. The reason there's two women in the show, if you watch the two women that are cut in Monique and Elaine, mm -hmm. their shows pick up way after COVID. Wow. Their mask in the first episode of their shows, there was no mask yeah. in my show until like the third or fourth show. Yeah. So the reason they added the two women is because they truly did not know if I would come back or not. That's why they, th th those were backup shows. Jeez. Well, look, I want to pivot on this, right? So obviously, Undercover Billionaire, you basically, you're, you, go, you go from obviously being highly successful down to full-fledged broke. I'm sure that taught you a great deal. I know, I know that my own story coming back from homelessness and all that kind of stuff is crazy. And there's a fight there. If people are watching right now, not if people, the people that are watching right now, right? What can you tell them right now to kickstart their, their way out of being quote unquote broke? especially after going through undercover billionaire and having to do all that. What yeah, look, you, you know, what I would tell you is, and, and the number one question I'm asked today, the most, by like nothing is even close. Number two is not even close. What would you do if you lost everything? Mm. I have a Gulfstream 550. I have all this great shit in my life, right? I got this beautiful condo in Miami. My, my wife and kids travel with me everywhere. We got a lot of support. I got 500 employees. Like, I, I, there's nothing I really worry about anymore, right? When when you go, when you lose your name and your money and you're in a new location and you don't know anybody, uh, all of a sudden everything got real, real to me. I was out of touch, just to be completely honest. I had fallen out of touch with what people are going through every day. Mm -hmm. That being said, this was the one of the worst and best experiences of my lifetime because even though I only had $100, okay, I realized I don't have my jet, don't have my cars, don't have my name, don't have my credit cards, can't call my banker and say, hey, send me 10 million. Like, I can't, I have none of that, right? I can't call my buddies. Yeah. Dude, what you meet when you don't have anything, if you haven't given up, okay, mm -hmm. what you meet is your courage. Mm -hmm. and, and you meet your creativity and you meet your, your whatever level of commitment you have to your future, then you get to meet yourself. And what I learned in this show was like, you cannot break me. I can be broke, yeah, but I won't be broken. 
Oh, I love and it. And mo money, money, cars, and jets, and all that stuff. The watches, the all the nice stuff. I had two T-shirts and two pairs of jeans. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, I had a piece of shit truck. It didn't even matter to me. I liked that truck. That truck I had and complained about every day on that show. <laughs> I liked that as much as the cars I have today. It didn't matter. And there was something very, very like spiritual about oh my god i don't need stuff yeah you know? and you can't take my stuff away from me and it matter yeah because it doesn't define who i am so that that was the cool part of that so my my recommendation to people would be like you need to understand that money you don't need money and that's why i did this show to prove to people you do not need money you do not need fame you don't need stuff but you do need a commitment and you do need a strategy and you're going to have to have some courage. That's right. That's right. Well, look, I know I only got a couple more minutes with you. I know you got a crazy busy day. We're traveling on your schedule for the audience listening out there and watching out there. What do you think the top three success habits that they should put together right now to really amplify what they're doing? So we got courage. We got that nailed down. What are, what are three other habits that they can put together right yeah. now? Number one, number one, show up. Once you commit to something, you got to keep showing up. Yeah. Your eyes are bleeding. You got COVID. Uh, you got problems at home. You, whatever. You got to show up. Yeah. You know, you got to show up. Like, however you can show up that day without putting other people at risk, you have to show up. Yeah. Uh, so, and then when you get there, you got to show up. Yeah. Just physically walking into a room doesn't mean you're there. You need to be there. Yeah. Right. And you need to leave all your problems at the street. Mm -hmm. And so be a bit, be present, like show up, really be there. Right. Number two, um, look, you got to follow up. Yeah. Okay. Like, like you can't just be in a space and think I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get a bunch of money and I'm gonna walk out. Like yeah. it, it, whether you win or whether you appear to lose for the moment, by the way, winning and losing their, their appearances, they're not, none of this is real. Yeah. Like, who knows if you're really winning or really losing? You don't know until this thing goes a little further down the road, right? So uh, we all know about the guy that wins the lottery and his whole life turns upside down or the person that becomes famous and the whole thing just like oh, it's the thing that they wish never happened to him, right? So whether you win or whether you lose, apparently, mm -hmm. you have to keep following up. You have to keep nurturing the relationship. Yeah. So when I, when I don't get what I want, I have to keep following up, right? That's the second thing. And the third thing is, you know, I would tell people start working for equity rather than money. Mm, that's good. That's Put good. yourself in a position of ownership. Doesn't mean you need to own the company, by the way. You know, partner with somebody. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of partnerships here. I, I'm not the boss of everything that Grant Cardone does. Yeah. There's a lot of relationships that I'm in where I am subservient. I have a subservient role in that relationship. Yeah. Um, so add value and work for equity. Yeah. Get a piece, get a tiny piece. I don't need the whole pie. When you eat dinner, you're like, you don't want to eat alone. <laughs> you, don't, you don't eat all of it. You want to share the food, right? So um, I think too many people out there right now in this entrepreneurial moment that we're having in America where everybody's an entrepreneur and wants to be an entrepreneur, yeah. dude, like be, be, be a servant mm -hmm. and be willing to, to add value to the party and make other people rich. Because mm -hmm. if I can make people around me rich, I'm pro if, if that is my profession, mm -hmm. making other people rich, not because I'm selling them courses, but because I'm adding value to their lives or their companies, right. there, there's a probably a really good chance if I'm around the right people, I'm going to get rich as well. Well, we know the doors are going to open for sure. Right. So people, people like people who add value to their lives. Just it's, exactly it's the principle. Right. Well, yeah. dude, and I appreciate all the time you share. I know you got to get back to it. You got a crazy busy day. For those of you guys who are watching, you've got to check out Undercover Billionaire. It's, it's on, I'm watching on Discovery Plus. Grant, where else can I find it? That's the only place you can watch it right now. Uh, they took it. The show's been such a big hit for, for uh, Discovery. What they did was they took it off of what's called their linear TV. They're going to bring it back on, on TV in April. But right now, the only place to watch it is Discovery+. Plus. It's a great show about a guy that loses everything. It's not produced. If you've ever wondered about reality TV being real, I promise you, this is real. You're going to see me go into a town with no money, 
And I'm trying to build, by the way, a $10 million business while I'm there. They don't show that. Yeah. Um, but what I'll be doing is each week uh, in different places, we YouTube and Clubhouse and different places, we drop content that you don't see uh, behind the scenes. Um, and it's about the American sex, sex story. And, and you'll, you will never, I'll just say this last thing. Yeah. Anybody watching, when you watch it, you will never be able to use money or time as an excuse again. Amen to, that. Amen to that, dude. Man, I love you to death. Appreciate all the time. Uh, you kill it today. Let me know. You, I'm always here to help you guys any way I can hand, any way I can. Have an amazing day. I'll see you soon, dude. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. See you, buddy. What can you say? The one, the only Grant Cardone. If you love that interview, you're really going to love this one. So make sure you check it out. Most people choose to be defined by it in a negative way, that they're okay. not capable, that they never can, it's never yeah. going to work out. And, and very few decide that I'm going to be defined by it in a positive way and use this to help serve humanity.